Hello, I'm Pastor David Robson here at Victory Above Only Ministries, and we're just glad to have you tuning in today. Pray the night's message will be a blessing to you. I want to start a a new message tonight, and uh, we're naming it The Comforter. The Comforter. Over in the book of John, chapter 14, verse number 16, It says, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Now notice this, I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Again, the night's message is the comforter. Today, while I was meditating on this message, I was thinking how appropriate uh, the word comforter is for the Holy Spirit, for Jesus to describe the Holy Spirit as a comforter. I'm telling you, uh, that that's exactly who he is. That's what he is. He is a comforter. And uh, in the Greek, Man, there's a Greek word for comforter, and it has a sevenfold meaning. And we're going to be teaching on those meanings tonight, and I want you to pay close attention. I remember when I first started getting into this, uh, learning more about the Holy Spirit, how exciting it was. I'm telling you to learn uh, the Greek, a little of the Greek, on what the the comforter is. So uh, in the Greek, the word comforter is paraclete which means one who is called to the side of another to help or for counsel. I'm glad that the Holy Spirit, thank God I'm glad that he's our helper. I'm glad he's our counselor. Thank God that's who he is. Amen. Another um, meaning for paraclete, amen, is advocate. Advocate. Ad, advocate is one like an, uh, an attorney, one who legally gives advice, amen, one who stands in for another, amen, one who, uh, now this is talking about, some, this is more than just a man standing in for us, this is the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit standing in for us before God the Father, amen, and he's uh, makes intercession. He pleads our case before God. Oh, let me tell you something. Uh, he's our advocate. He's one who prays. Amen. And intercedes for us. Thank God. The Bible says over in the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 26, it says, likewise, the Spirit helpeth Notice this, it says, The Spirit helpeth our infirmities. Uh, For we know not how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit itself, the word there itself should be himself, because the Holy Spirit is a he, he's not a it, he's not a something, amen, he's a person, thank God. So the Spirit himself maketh intercessions for us. Notice that he makes intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. In other words, sometimes we don't know how to pray. Sometimes we don't know what to pray. But if we have the paraclete with us, thank God. I'm glad if we have the advocate with us, thank God, he'll get in the prayer with us. Amen. He'll get in the prayer with us and uh, he'll, he'll be the advocate between us and the Father. Oh, it's good to know the Holy Spirit. It's good to know that when you don't know how to pray as you are, that the Holy Spirit will get in this thing with you and help you to pray. Sometimes there's been burdens that's come upon me. Uh, let me ask you, how many of you out there is listening, there's ever been a burden come upon you? Amen. You didn't know Uh, know what it was about you didn't understand it all you knew was a burden came on you well I've had that happen many a times I've woke up in at night and uh, didn't know what was going on and amen but in those moments when I've had those burdens and I didn't know what to pray about let me tell you when God drops a, a burden on you there's something to pray about 
Amen. When you get burdened, don't go uh, grab something to eat and try to eat it away or drink it away. My goodness, the best thing you can do is get down on your knees and ask the Lord what this is about. Amen. The Lord knows what it's about. Thank God it's in those moments when those burdens comes on us that we have to lean on the Holy Spirit. Amen. To stand in for us and help us to know what to pray. I could tell you some stories. I, amen. I can't tell you the times that I've woke up with a heavy burden to pray and didn't know what I was praying about. Amen. But the Holy Ghost, thank God, took over. Amen. My prayer and gave me my prayer language language and I prayed until I got a note of joy thank God for those times that the Holy Spirit got involved amen I don't know the times that the Lord's uh, used God's people to to pray for somebody that was in trouble somebody who was in need somebody who may have been going to commit suicide somebody who was in trouble let me tell you something the Holy Spirit knows all things he helped our weaknesses amen the Holy Spirit helps our weaknesses he knows things that we don't know and let me tell you something about the Holy Spirit you know sometimes we can miss it sometimes we might think we know what's going on sometimes we might know think we know how to pray and amen be a million miles off but let me tell you something about the Holy Spirit he don't ever miss it Amen. He don't never miss it. He knows how to pray. He knows what to pray. He knows how to pray in the perfect will of God. He never misses it. He always hits the mark. Sometimes the Lord will let you in on what you're praying about. Amen. For example, uh, one time I was out uh, beside the house and I was praying. And uh, while I was praying, I began. I got in the spirit and began to pray in my heavenly language. And I noticed that while I was praying, I was uh, pointing in a certain direction out toward Advance Crossroads out in that area with my hands in the air. And um, I didn't know what exactly I was praying about. But after I prayed for a while in the spirit, the Lord made it clear to me that I was praying for Chad for some reason. That's my son. And uh, I, I felt like... The, that we was praying a hedge of protection around him. That's what uh, the thought came to my heart. And sure enough, the next week, Chad was coming home from Jennifer's. That's his wife now. This is before they were married. Uh, he had worked all day, and they had went on a date that night, and he was tired and coming up that old Shelby Road out near Advance Crossroads. And uh, he was coming out that road, and uh, he, he was tired, and he fell asleep. Amen. He fell asleep behind the wheel, run off the road, and the truck that he was driving, it landed between two trees. I mean, it just looked like Chad had aimed uh, for that target to go between those two trees. Uh, it's it's a, a little comical to think about now, the way that tree, uh, truck was hung in those trees. But uh, thank God that uh, that truck hit perfectly. It was a miracle that he hit between those two trees and the truck was hanging there stuck between them. And uh, I thought if he would hit head on fast as he was going, he, it could have thrown him out it, and caused him to hit the tree and, uh, or it could have broke his neck. There's a lot of things that could have happened during that car wreck. But thank God Chad came out without any... Uh, Mark's on him. He come out. God, God watched over him and never had a scratch on him. Thank God that the Holy Spirit that night, amen, knew how to pray. Amen. Well, preacher, if you was praying, why didn't God stop the wreck? I don't understand all. I don't understand it all. It's a mystery, some of the things that, that we go through. But let me tell you, God protected my son, the old truck was totaled and had to get rid of it but his life was spared without a scratch and let me tell you it's all because our advocate the Holy Spirit knew how to pray oh let me tell you uh, isn't it good to have a friend like that Oh, thank God, I'm glad I got a few friends like that, full of the Holy Spirit. Thank God, full of the power of God and uh, hey man knows how to pray in the Spirit Another meaning for paraclete is a helper. 
I thank God tonight that the Holy Spirit will be our helper. Thank God he's the best help that I've ever had. Amen. When I've got down, he's helped me back up again and again and again. As the Bible says, he helpeth our infirmities. He helps us to pray. He helps us to understand the word of God. Amen. Let me tell you, he's the perfect teacher. He can, he can teach us all things that this Bible's got in it if we'll obey him and listen to him. Amen. He helps us to love people that's unlovable. Amen. He helps us to forgive those that seem like it's impossible to forgive. Amen. He, he helps our infirmities. He helps our weaknesses. Amen. When I've had nobody else. Amen. You ever come to a place in your life didn't have seem like anybody to lean on? Let me tell you something. He, you can lean on him anytime. Amen. And he's always there to listen. Amen. He's always there to pour his love upon us. Amen. To pour his oil of gladness on us. He all, he's always there to anoint our head with oil. Amen. So that our cup will run over. He helps us with all kinds of problems, all kinds of decisions. He helps us. Amen. He's helped me so many times I, I couldn't count them all. It'd be impossible. Amen. Years I've served God to remember them all. But thank God I remember. Amen. There's been a many a time I didn't know what to do, who to turn to, what to do. Amen. Didn't know what decisions to make. But I'm glad the Holy Spirit was there. Thank God I'm glad he'll be your helper. Oh, praise his holy name. Also, paraclete is, it, it means an advisor. I'm glad the Holy Ghost wants to be a, our advisor Amen. He, he knows what paths that we're supposed to take, what turns we're supposed to take. Amen. Sometimes he'll tell us to go up. Amen. Sometimes he'll ten, tells us to stand still. Amen. We have to learn from him. We have to lean on him for direction. Lean not to our own understanding, but acknowledge him in all of our ways, and he'll direct our paths. Thank God we have to lean on his timing. Amen. Lean on his will. Thank God for the paraclete. Amen. Who is called alongside, beside of us. Amen. He, oh, let me, let me tell you what the Bible said. The Bible says that you'll hear a voice behind you saying, go this way, go that way. You know what it's talking about there? It's, it's talking about the voice of the Holy Spirit. Oh, I'm telling you, if you'll listen, he'll lead and guide you. Thank God he'll t tell you which way to go, tell you when to go, when not to go. I've heard his voice a many a time when I was seeking his face for direction about television or radio and something about the church. Should we buy the land? Should we do this? Should we do that? Amen. And, and, and we listen to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank God. And I'll tell you, if we'll listen to him, he'll never lead us in the wrong directions. We've took some big steps at times. Amen. Bought big, these big fields out here, out, out here and all around us, all this land around us. Amen. At time, it looked like it would be impossible to pay for it. But the Holy Spirit said, do it and do it now. I remember when we bought this 18 acres uh, beside of us here. The man that I'd been uh, talking to about it for years, I've been here a long time. It's the first time, I, uh, first church I passed, and, I, and I'm still here after about close to 40 years. So I've been here a long time, and that man lived out there all the time that I've lived here, and I went back and forth ever so often asking him, would you be willing to sell that land? Would you sell us that property for the church? Every time he'd reply, nope, I'm never going to get rid of it. Said I'm gonna say I'm never gonna sell it. I'm gonna uh, keep it for my kids and my grandbabies. He said I'll never sell it. Well, we kept praying and believing God wanted the church to have it. And one day, while we was right in the middle of building it, uh, our multiple purpose building out here, we were in the middle of it, and it's gonna take hundreds of thousands of dollars to do it. And we stepping out, and we're gonna do it by faith. Come on. So we started building that building by faith, and, and when we did, we got some gravels over on his property. And so he come out here one day, and he said, Preacher, he said, I believe you got over on us a little bit. 
And I thought, well, that's no problem. We'll just move those few gravels, you know, back on our side of the property lines. And he said, no, that's all right. I'll just sell it to you. And here we were. You know what God will do? He'll wait till the swelling of the Jordan sometime. Amen, he'll, he'll wait till it looks at its worst. You're about to run out of meal in your barrel. Come on. And he'll send a prophet by and say, give me a cake of bread. Come on. Amen. Sometimes it looks like the most impossible time, the time not to do something. Amen, when the Lord will speak to your heart and tell you it's time to do it. Well, we, we didn't just, uh, just jump, and, uh, jump the gun, but we went... I got my deacons together and we walked out to the edge of that field and we prayed, God, in the name of Jesus, do you want this property to be the church? It's about that time the Holy Ghost shows up. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. If you don't know that voice, you don't know what you're missing. Amen. The Holy Spirit spoke and said, bye. Well, we went ahead, stepped out by faith, even though we was in the middle of building this multiple purpose building out here, we stepped out by faith and bought it. Amen, there's some people got a hold to that and uh, preachers around saying David's put them in so much debt they'll never get out of debt. Amen, stuff like that. Oh, let me tell you, devil always see to it that you get those type of messages back. He wants to discourage what you're doing. But you know what? We knew we heard from God. We knew that the, that was the direction to go and so we just obeyed the Holy Spirit. And you know what? I'm glad we did. Just a couple days, just two weeks after that man signed those papers, out at the end of the field, so does that field. Two weeks after he signed those papers, he was sitting at the breakfast table. After all the years we'd try to buy this, come on, you can't tell me God don't know what's about to happen. You can't tell me the Holy Ghost, hey amen, our advocate, our intercessor, thank God the power of God, the anointing of God don't know what's going to happen. Two weeks later, that man was sitting at his breakfast table and just went laid over dead, dropped dead right there. And I thought, if we had waited another two weeks, we would have missed our blessing. Let me tell you, when the Holy Ghost who stands before God the Father make an intercession, gets a word from God, and he gives it to you, you can plan it. You can, amen, plan on it. It's going to come to a harvest. We obeyed God's instruction, and we, we bought that field, and we got this building built. We built it by faith. Amen, paid for it, hundreds of thousands of dollars paid for. Amen, that land out there, it's paid for. We bought this land out behind us also. Amen, <laughs> 18, 20 acres right back in here. Amen, and, and it's paid for. We bought another five acres down here. It's all paid for. Amen, every piece of land we've ever bought is paid for. Every building we ever set out to build is paid for. Let me tell you, when you listen to the Holy Spirit, don't listen to everybody around you. The winds of doubt and fear and unbelief will begin to blow. But amen, if you can hear the Holy Spirit, glory to God, if you can hear his voice, if you can get on his side, everything will be all right. Amen. Every radio station we're on, reaching 167 countries right now. Places like Baghdad, places like Lebanon. We're in Russia, Canada. We're reaching 167 countries. We're on most precious place we're reaching today is in Bethlehem, the house of bread in Jerusalem. Thank God, or, or in Israel, we are reaching all over the holy lands with the word of God every week. Well, the enemy told me we couldn't do it, but we are doing it. Amen. Right now, they just informed me last week on INI, that's Inspirational Network. Amen. We are reaching right now over 200 countries with the word of God. Let me tell you, when God tells you to move, it's time to move. Don't move until you know it's him. i got to preach here a little bit. David one time was asking for direction. He didn't know which way to go. Amen. Uh, 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 oh, my, my. But he consulted in the Lord. Asked God what to do. Amen. And, and God told him, pursue it. Go after it. Thank God he encouraged himself and went down to the enemy's camp and took back his stuff. Amen. But there were other times that God would tell him, don't go. I remember Elijah one time. 
Thank God are y'all hearing me. Amen. Elijah gotten a uh, word from Israel. There's a need, there's a, you know, wanting to know whether to go up or not. Amen. And God told them to go and they want. Let me tell you something. When God tells you to do something, you can bank on it. Amen. One time God told David, he said, don't go up until you hear the sound in the mulberry trees. When you hear the sound in the top of the mulberry tree, then that's when to go. Let me tell you, we got an advocate. Thank God we got a spy in the camp. Let me tell you, they obeyed those instructions in one every time. Let me tell you, it's good to have a Holy Ghost spy in the enemy's camp. It's good to have an advocate on your side that can go before the Father, plead your case and get a word for you, bring it back to you. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. I don't know how many times I've stood out in the... A lot of times, I like to pray outside. A lot of times, I, amen, I've prayed and uh, right out here in a certain area. I'm telling you, that's anointed ground out there. I'm telling you that right now. There's been a million, a many, a many a time I've prayed about, Lord, should I go on this radio station? Should I go on this and that? Amen. That's back when the money, well, <laughs> uh, when the money, well, like we call, was funny. And let me tell you something. I was paying out more uh, in radio and uh, television than I was, was making a salary. And that's the truth. And it, it was all over America. When, and then finally God moved us across seas and reaching 167 countries by radio there, 200 nations with the word of God by television. And it's all been because direction of the Holy Spirit. If you know anything about radio and television, it's not cheap. Amen. Some of those stations I was on back, back 30, 35 years ago, some of them was $300 a week. Some of them 200 Some of them 100 We was on a bunch of them. And, and I'm telling you, it, it was miracle money come in every week. Manna come in every week. That's, that's why I know you can trust the Holy Spirit. Hey, man, when he says you can walk on the water, you can. I didn't know I was going to get on all of this tonight, but there may be somebody listening right now trying to make a, a, a decision. And you're basing everything you're hearing on what they're saying, what the naysayers are saying. If I listened to every naysayer that I've had to come up again me, I would, wouldn't be preaching on radio and television today. Let me tell you, there's an inner voice, the voice of the Spirit. You've got an inner man, a spirit man that can hear the voice of the Spirit. And the Bible said, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. Oh, let me tell you. There's been times that he said, yes, go. And we've went and done it when the naysayers say we couldn't do it. I mean, there's been times that I've went before God and there's been things that I really wanted. I, I wanted to do it. But the Lord would shut it down. He'd say, no, it's not right timing yet. I, I don't want you to do it. And you know what? As long as I can hear his will, as long as I hear his will, I'll be all right. As long as I can hear his voice, we'll not mess up. Thank God I've depended on that voice. Amen. I've depended on, I'm depending on it right now. Thank God, thank God for the voice of the Holy Spirit. Can I tell you, he is our paracletus. Thank God. Amen. He'll, he'll help you make right decisions. He'll help you if you listen to him. Another meaning for paracletus is a counselor. Amen. In the day's world, they've got counselors for everything. They've got counselors for counselors. <laughs> they've got marriage counselors. Oh, I'm telling you, 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 you can find all kinds of counseling today. Funny thing about most of this counseling day, they'll find somebody been married six, seven times to, to cancel people. Amen. My, my, I want somebody. Well, I better not go there. But let me tell you something. Um, we need counselors. Counseling's all right. Amen. I'm not telling you not to go to some uh, marriage counselor if you need it. Amen. But uh, I'm all for marriage counseling. But also, um, but uh, all this, I, I'm, I'm for some of that. But the best counselor you'll ever have in your marriage, amen, is the Holy Spirit. He's the Holy Ghost counselor. Amen. The Holy Spirit will teach you how to love your wife, how to treat your wife. He'll teach you how to treat your children. He'll teach you how to lead them and guide them. 
Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. He said he would lead you and guide you into all truth. He'll lead you to Jesus Christ, not some antichrist. He'll lead you to what's right and not to what's wrong. Thank God. Another meaning for paraclete is a strengthener. I've come to tell you this evening that the comforter will strengthen you. Amen. He'll, he'll be your strength. I've seen the Holy Spirit, my Lord, strengthen people in all types of situations. It looked like they were going to crack up, looked like they was going under. But I've seen the Holy Spirit wrap his arms around those people. Amen. When all hope was gone. Amen. When natural strength runs out, God's strength just begins to work. When natural strength runs out, grace begins to flow. When natural strength, amen, when it, when it goes to the side, faith just starts working. Let me tell you, the Bible says that you shall receive power. 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 Amen. Well, he's talking about strength, power, the dunamis. Amen. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you'll receive power. You'll receive the, the dunamis. Do you remember the disciples? When they took Jesus to try him and crucify him, every last one of them ran and hid. Amen. Peter told Jesus, he said, though all of them forsake you, I'll not run, I'll not forsake you, Lord. Jesus looked at him and said, Peter, before the cock crows this night, you'll deny that you've known me three times. Peter didn't think he could ever fail. I was canceling with a young man this week that uh, had a mess up in his life. Amen. A few weeks ago, I gave him a warning, told him, son, amen. In other words, he wasn't ready. Amen. <laughs> to go out and do some things he was getting ready to do, leave town, get away from a good Holy Ghost church, mess his life up. Sure enough, he come back this week. and He was in amenable shape. He said, I didn't know I was as weak as I was. Didn't take too long. Didn't take too long. Amen, he had fell flat of his face. Let me tell you something. My Lord, the Holy Ghost won't lead you to where you're going to fall. The Holy Ghost... Thank God will lead you where you're going to be strong. Amen. That young man said, I didn't know I was that weak. Told me the stuff that he'd got into in just a few weeks. Let me tell you, you can mess up right quick when you get away from the Word, away from the Holy Spirit. Get out of church. You can mess up real quick, faster than you thought. Peter didn't think for a moment that he could ever fall. He didn't think for a minute he'd ever slip. You know why? He, he was hanging around Jesus. Amen. He was hanging around Jesus. Jesus was his comforter. Jesus was his strength. Amen. As long as he was around Jesus, Jesus could rescue him. Jesus could pull him up when he began to sink. Amen. But Peter, let me tell you something. Uh, on his own, he was nothing. Amen. Peter and all the disciples ran. They fled. And uh, let, let me let me tell you, uh, Peter fell in such a way. He fell bigger than them all. He he lied, denied, and cussed, and cut a man's ear off. Denied that he even knew Jesus. All these guys had fled. But after those guys had an upper room experience, I'll tell you what we need in our life. We need an upper room experience. Amen. He, they went to the upper room and was filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Bible said Peter and all the other disciples stood up. I thought about that. They had fell down, but thank God in the upper room, the Holy Ghost came on them and they stood up. And I never did read where they sat back down. Let me tell you something. Amen, the Holy Ghost to put strength in you. Amen, let me tell you, he'll endure you with power from on high, strength from on high. Thank God for the strength that came through the Holy Ghost. Amen, the power. I'm talking about the dunamis. Talking about the dynamo. I'm talking about the energizer, the generator, the quickener, the anointing. 
thank God the dudamus, the power moved into those 120 in that upper room and they thank God and they received the strength of the Holy Spirit and they went out and did marvelous works. They went out and cast out devils. They went out and did the works of Jesus Christ. Can I tell you, if you'll, if you'll uh, get filled with the Holy Ghost, you'll be like those disciples in that upper room. You'll receive power. Amen. Over in the book of John, chapter 16 and verse 17, Jesus told the disciples that it was expedient. In other words, it's real necessary. It's a necessity that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter, there it is, the comforter, the paracletus, amen, the strengthener, will not come. But if I depart, I'll send him unto you. What Jesus was saying here is you don't understand it right now. Sorrow has filled your heart before, because I'm going away. But uh, after a while, you're going to understand it, that I had to go back to the Father before I could send the Holy Spirit back to you. So it's necessary that I go, because if I don't go, the Holy Spirit can't come unto you. But he said, if I go, I'll send a comforter unto you. He was saying, I, hey amen, he was saying I was the comforter. This is Jesus saying I was the comforter while I was with you on earth. But I was on the outside. Amen. But when the Spirit comes upon you, he's not, he, he, he's going to be just like me. He's going to comfort you. He's going to lead you. He's going to guide you. He's going to be just like me. But thank God he's going to be on the inside. Amen. He'll be on the inside. He'll never leave you. Hey, man, I can only be at one place at one time, but the Holy Spirit, he's going to move in, and he'll be in everywhere you ever go. Whatever situation you're in, he'll be there inside of you to lead and guide you. Hey, man, he was saying the difference is I was on the outside, but he'll be on the inside. Hey, Amen. He'll lead and guide, teach and strengthen you empower you, help you to pray. Amen. He'll, he'll help you to pray through. Amen. When he comes upon you. And I'm looking back there and I'm seeing my time has come and gone. And that, that actually, that, that was the ending of the message. I hope you enjoyed this evening. Let the Holy Spirit come in and be your comforter. Amen. Let him be your strength. Let him have, be your advocate. Let, let him be all these things I spoke about tonight. Let him be your helper. Amen. Let me remind everybody, too, that we're on radio and television by faith. I hope you've enjoyed the program. If, if you'd uh, like to write us, we're going to give you our mailing address. If you'd like to get a pencil handy. Let me thank the church, everybody who's been supporting, keeping your church rolling on. All the tithers, thank God for our tithers. My goodness, thank God, thank God, thank God. Amen. I thank God. I look back at all the pictures and I see all the tithers. I'm walking around here, amen, laying my hands toward the tithers and saying, God, bless the tithers. Bless those that's qualified. Amen. We've, we've got a few in here, though, I, that hadn't even thought about the church all the time. They've been out as far as their tithing offerings. Amen. I don't understand it. Amen. How a Christian, how a saint would not think about their tithes, especially. Well, preacher, don't you know it's bad, honey? Let me tell you, you don't know how bad it can get if you if you steal from God, take what belongs to God. Let me just remind you, amen, if, if you're not paying your tithe, read, read your Bible. Amen. Read it. Amen. Let me remind you, if you'd like to send a gift to the church, to the radio, television, to the... Uh, Keep the lights on. Keep the TV bills and everything rolling on. Our address is Victory Above Only Ministries. You don't have to be a member to do that either. You can, book, amen, be a part of us, partner, amen, participate, have the same anointing on this house by giving to this house. Amen. So address is Victory Above Only Ministries, 7255 Burke County Road, Hickory, North Carolina, 28602. God bless you. We love you. Keep looking up. Jesus may come tonight. God bless you.